Fortnite legends, I hope you're all awesome on today's video. Uh, we're not actually going to be checking out the big fluffy cat here. We're going to be checking out the Roland GP100. It is a preamp and effects processor from the mid 90s, widely considered the very first digital modeler. The idea is that you have a preamp section in here that sets out to digitally recreate a bunch of classic amps. And you know, you got the JC120, you got a Matchless, you got some Marshalls, a Soldano, a 5150. All the stuff we're used to nearly 30 years later, there's built-in speaker simulation and there is a fully featured effects section. If you're familiar with the Roland GP8 or GP16, very similar effects selection in there. Let's take a look at the front panel and then hear some sounds. Let's take a quick look at the front panel of the GP100. On the far left, you've got a guitar input with associated input level knob. There's also a little input signal and clipping indicator over here. Just next to that, you've got the output level. So this knob controls the overall output of the device as well as the headphone level. There's a headphone jack just under that. Then if we move along, we've got the preamp controls over here. So these are kind of amp style controls. Volume is gonna be what would normally be labeled a gain control on a traditional guitar amp. Then you've got three band EQ presence and an overall output level. Then you've got the, what I'm gonna consider the more traditional rack style interface on here with a few buttons and a small display. So you've got access to the preamp, the global settings, the tuner, a utility function on there to set things like MIDI channels and a bunch of other deeper functions. Underneath that, you've got right and exit. So you're kind of editing controls. You've got a meter control on there and you've got a bypass for the entire effects system in there. Next to that, you have a parameter and a number or value encoder. You'll notice that the knobs aren't on mine. That's because neither of the encoders work. They're very glitchy. They're just kind of old and thrashed out. However, pretty fortunate that if we focus on the screen over here, someone has actually made a computer editor. It's for Windows. So I've been through a bit of a process figuring out the easiest way to get this to work on my Mac. I ended up just using parallels, but basically the knob and parameter values are mirrored on the computer. So I can just kind of scroll through the parameters if I want. I've also got quick access to things like the overall knob. So I can hit the exit knob on here, which mirrors the front panel control and I can scroll through presets and also deep edit all the effects in here. So for the rest of the video, I'm actually gonna be using this Windows editor. I've got my PRS Custom 24 plugged straight into the GP100 and we're gonna have a look at some factory patches. I'm gonna start on factory patch number two, JC120 Clean. I'm using the Windows editor on here. And as you can see, there's a representation of the signal flows. So just the preamp, speaker simulator, noise suppressor, foot volume, chorus, and reverb over here. I can tweak the preamp in the editor. I can tweak the speaker simulator and I can go through and tweak all the effects in here as well. This tap delay is really, really cool too. So I'm gonna actually just use the front panel preamp controls to just kind of fine tune the preamp sound and go for a lush 80s style clean. Even though this is from the mid nineties, it seems appropriate. <laughs> Kind of nice, just fattening it up a little bit in there. I'm gonna play with the, uh, look, we got center, middle, and edge for the speaker. Let's have a listen to the difference there. reverb on there. The chorus has a low pass filter on it. Let's take that say to 6.3k. What I find really interesting about this is 
even on modern boss products like the GT1000, they still have this kind of drop down menu for high cut and low cut, and there's always the same values in there. So yeah, not much has changed in nearly 30 years. <laughs> I really, really like that clean sound. We could chuck a compressor on top of that. So we've got two options, compressor or limiter. I'm just gonna turn the overall level on this down a little bit so I don't boost it too much. Check this out. Let's try this tap delay in here. I'm going to engage it and you can see there's some pretty interesting controls in here. There is a ducker section in there. You can set the total amount of feedback from tap one, the direct level, the overall panning for your direct signal. Then over here, you've got the individual delay taps. So this is really, really cool. What I can do is change the panning on here, left, right, anywhere I like in the center and the overall level. So let's bring the level on the taps up just a little bit and have a listen to what we get. to as well I'm fairly certain I've got a filter on there yeah let's set the low pass filter to about 4k on this let's audition a different amp as well we've got small middle JC 120 sorry these are the speakers amp uh, I've got a clean twin I've got a matchless drive let's have a listen to what the matchless sounds like I do find it really funny that like I said earlier nearly 30 years later I'm using the same standard amp types in modelers <laughs> quickly and see how much grit we can get out of this matchless drive model. I'll take the volume or gain up to 100. Notice you have a three mode gain switch on here. Let's try a different speaker. Let's go for, I don't know, built in two. What does this give us? <laughs> thing I've ever heard in my life. It's not super bright or anything like that, which sometimes it's kind of like Vox derived models in like a pod or something can sound a bit cartoonish. Let's try a different amp model in here. There's a Marshall 1959. Let's go for, I don't know, the Marshall stack number one with that. Check it out. <laughs>
cool is you can rearrange all of this kind of stuff here. You know, I can move the EQ in front of the preamp. Let's do that. I'll turn the EQ on and I'll, let's give it like a bit of an 800 hertz boost in there, kind of Tom Schultz style overall level. Let's just have a listen to what the EQ does. <laughs> Now I kind of went into the deep end tweaking straight away with that. I did say I was going to explore some factory patches. So let's go over to uh, the fourth preset in here. This is just a kind of fender patch. I'll let you hear the stock settings. I think it sounds pretty decent. Again, we're using the built-in cabinet sims here. <laughs> So the volume control cleanup, it's fine. It's not amazing. That's one area where down the track, I think most modelers have generally improved. Uh, there's some really fun presets though. I'm gonna go to preset number nine, which is this fantasy strings preset. I'll just play it for you. try and figure out what's in that and try to recreate it on my axe effects. Uh, let's hear the boogie lead because I think this is probably one area where digital modeling might have improved a little bit. <laughs> Thanks to the magic of television, I have disabled the speaker simulator globally on the GP100 and I've loaded a stereo pair of my go-to LT-TV Mix 7 cabinet IRs. You can grab them for free in the video description. Let's hear it with IRs now. <laughs> Thank you. 
even with IRs and even with trying to kind of tweak the EQ on there. I think kind of the joy of this unit though is that there's some really creative effects chains in here and you've got stuff like the slow gear and the boss VB2. So I'm just gonna surf some presets now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All <laughs> right, man. So far in the video, I think the amp sounds have been, you know, pretty passable considering how old this is and considering it was the first of its kind, but nothing that would have blown you away. What I want to try now is running some of the high gain models into some power amp simulations. So you heard the built-in speaker sims at the start of the video, you heard them with the speaker sims disabled into some IRs. Now I'm adding power amp simulation to the equation. And I think this is kind of awesome. This is the boogie lead model. I've got the bass at 47, middle at 55, treble at 84. I'm on the high gain mode and I've placed an EQ after it, kind of mimicking the boogie EQ. So there's a little cut at about 240 hertz. There's a big cut at 800 hertz. And I pushed the bass and treble sliders on there a little bit. Check this out. <laughs> some reverb, a circular style delay on there using three of the four available delay taps and a bit of chorus. There is a pitch shifter harmonist in here as well. I've got it set up uh, not doing anything on the pitch. It's just got the fine control at nine. So kind of imitating some pitch detune. <laughs> flanger or phaser in front, you'll hear the dry sound, then the flanger, then the phaser set to a four stage phaser. <laughs> showcase of 
how good this can sound and what the effects can do. Let's hit the 5150 again with this power amp simulation and IR. I've placed an EQ before the preamp section in the GP100 just to pull out some low end. So I'll let you hear it without the pre-EQ. And then with it, I'm kind of boosting a little bit at 800 and a little bit at 1600 as well. So no EQ boost, and then I'll kick it in. You'll hear it, it's pretty distinct. <laughs> Marshall model in here now. This is the 1959 1. I've got the volume on the high gain mode at around 70. Bass is at 60. Middle is around 70. Treble is just below 40. I've got the presence control at 60. And I'll do the same thing. I'll add a little kind of EQ boost to it once we've heard it on this Les Paul. Again, I think this is way more convincing than the built-in speaker simulation. Uh, sort of the missing element of this is definitely the kind of tube power amp response in there. <laughs> pretty awesome for a Marshall style sound. I think I'm going to pull up stumps right here with the GP100. The effects straight out of the box I really really like and the clean preamp sounds in there are fantastic. It is pretty amazing that you know for the very first commercially available digital modeler they got so much about this right when it comes to being able to rearrange the block order when it comes to the selection of amp models when it comes to kind of the built-in speaker sims, not so much about how they sound, but how you can tweak them. The effect options, that tap delay is amazing. The reverb sound great, the chorus, the flanger and the phaser, you know, they're <laughs> Roland and Boss, chorus, flanger and phaser, they sound fantastic. I think probably the thing that hadn't taken root yet is that ability to uh, kind of capture the dynamic response of a kind of tube power section, which now with stuff like the Axe FX, or if you're using the power amp simulation in two notes wall of sound, or just about anything modern in the modeling space, kind of has that in there. And I remember when the very first Axe FX came out, the kind of selling point for it was that it had dynamic tube response. And that was the first unit that came out where I think people went, oh my God, you know, digital modeling can properly sound amazing. And that only came out 10 years after this unit. So I would argue that the GP100 uh, was almost like ahead of its time. I think what you can do with it, you know, if you were running this as a preamp into like a stereo tube power amp back in the day in some cabinets, 
would have sounded absolutely crushing. And then the DI tones you can get out of it are pretty fantastic. The other cool thing is there's an A output and a B output on here. So let's say, for example, you wanted to run this again with a stereo tube power amp, it's your preamp and your effects processor. But you want to go to a clean sound and like have the clean sound be DI through the PA, you can do that and have it switch on there. There's loads of options for external switches. Uh, there is this third party computer editor, which is kind of saved me having to open this up and change the encoders. Uh, it looks really cool. The layout on it, you know, having the preamp controls right here is really, really handy. It's pretty fantastic. I am genuinely really, really impressed and almost kind of blown away about how right Roland got this straight out of the box. If you think about, uh, you know, the first generation of modeling units, this was, I think, 95, and then the Line 6 Axis was 96, so a couple of months later. And then you had stuff like the Pod, the Johnson J Station, you know, the Digitech Johnson stuff. Um, you know, the Pod was really, really handy, but I think no one was going around saying like the Line 6 stuff sounded amazing or comparable to uh, rack units or what you get out of real tube amps. It was a really handy tool that sounded pretty good. This, I think on the contrary, could kind of compete, if not, you know, exceed what you could get out of some things there. The effects are fantastic. Again, running it into a proper tube power section, it sounds proper. And I don't know, I just really, really like it. I can see why someone like Devin Townsend still used one of these up until the last couple of years ago. So with that, I have dialed in a little patch kind of inspired by some of the Dev Terrier stuff. Where is it? Before I go, I want to say a very big thank you to all of my amazing patrons who support me on Patreon. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel and you want to sign up, link in the video description. If you like some of the riffs you've heard in this video, you might like my band Ragdoll as well. I will link our music in the video description. Let me know your thoughts on the GP100 in the comment section below, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time.